shall we play a game? Why, yes. I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to Shame Plays Radio, live geek talk radio from out of 96.5 FM, The Answer, Little Rock, Arkansas. We're also on uh, 96.5 FM, The Answer dot com, and people can listen online there and on the streams through iHeartRadio or, um, oh, what's that other one? Uh, Tune in radio apps. And they're also carried a week delayed on Krypton Radio, kryptonradio.com, which is uh, sci fi for your Wi-Fi. So those are those are all the different ways that you can listen uh, to the show, but we love to have you live. It is a live show, so at any time, you can call in at 501-823-0965. That's 501-823-0965. Or you can, uh, you can tweet me at Shane Plays. That's uh, S-H-A-N-E-P-L-A-Y-S, Shane Plays. So at any time during the show, feel free to do that. And I'm more than happy to work your questions and comments into the show. So uh, my guest, uh, Kevin Clay, is with us here in the studio. The one and only Kevin Clay. He's actually, <laughs> there, was a, there was a TV on oh, in the yeah. background. Yes, and yes. he was running around like mad trying to turn the TV like, off. where are the buttons? They don't yeah. put buttons and on then, TVs anymore. And then I'm like, oh, here's a remote. So I turn the TV <laughs> off. So if you heard if you heard some mumbling background noise, that was uh, that was the TV. I tell you, it's like you. the old days. It, it's not a TV in the studio. I miss knobs on TVs. I know. You know what else I miss? What's that? I was just thinking about it on my way over here. I got in the car. It was kind of hot. Do you remember in the old days when you didn't just have AC in the car, but you had Max AC? I think I do remember that. Remember the, oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you knew Max AC. He was going to do it. Now we just have AC. Now we just have AC. Yeah. What happened? I but, don't know. They're, now we just have multiple settings. They keep giving us options we may yeah. or may not want. Oh, they had multiple settings back then, but yeah. you knew Max, Max AC, AC was, was like, the serious. Was not mess- that was a whole separate button. It was know? not messing around yeah. when you got yeah. into Max AC. All right, so uh, we're going to do some housekeeping notes here, and then we'll dig into the show proper. The show proper, oh, Kevin. Oh, a proper show. Yeah, I, proper, I wouldn't know anything about that. The proper <laughs> show. And we'll be talking with Kevin today about, uh, one, uh, board games after the first break. Uh, he's, he's got us uh, the, the top five games for families that you may not be aware of so i don't even know what they are i'm i'm excited to hear and then uh i i'm i'm in suspense like everybody else and then and then kevin also uh narrates audiobooks for audible so um later in the show we'll be talking to him about uh, how the sausage is made as far as <laughs> as far as audiobooks go so uh but before that remember that um you can always go to shaneplays.com the website shaneplays.com and that the show notes are always there for um, your convenience. So as you're listening to the show or if you're listening to the podcast uh, or on Krypton Radio, you can go, hey, what, what were they talking about? Or I want to see what that link is. You can go to shameplays.com and there'll be a post there with notes for today's show. Can we look now? You can so look now. I know now. what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, you can look now, but I did not list what the actual five games oh, are great. going to be. Okay. So they're going to have to wait for that. So you can also, uh, Shane Plays is really blessed and thankful to have sponsors. However, you can also support the show as a listener at uh, Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Shane Plays. And that link is also on the show notes and on the site. And for as little as a dollar a show, you can support the show if you like the idea of live geek talk radio and you like the show. Uh, that's always appreciated. I'm trying to, Kevin, I'm trying to, I'm doing an experiment of trying to strike a blend, a balance, if you will, mm-hmm. between sponsors and show support from listeners. See, I always, always ask people to bring food up to the station. Yeah. So it's kind of the same thing. It's like, like the, the doctor back in the day that got paid in chickens. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. It's paid him in chickens. Bring me a Chick-fil-A. They're just across the street. Well, the, the Patreon is really cool. It's helping a lot of people create stuff that, you know, they may not otherwise. So, And I always tell people, Patreon is not mandatory. You can listen to the show forever and never play. But if people are like, hey, I like this. Oh, okay. Then, then they can, right? So it's just it just helps. So, uh, But I, always, I also want to help have sponsors – because sponsors, it's a win-win. Sponsors get exposure, and the show gets support. So there's nothing wrong with that model at all. No, no. I'm a dirty capitalist. No, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I'm a dirty capitalist. Also, don't forget the show does go out as a podcast. Uh, usually the night of or on Sunday uh, after the show, um, and it's that's on my. I'll post that on my blog. It's also on iTunes and Stitcher and other fine 
podcast directories, Kevin. I don't see how you could miss it uh, you can't, with you, all those places you are. It's a veritable uh, uh, cornucopia of, of options. Shane will also come by your house tapping on the windows at night. Yeah. Like, hey, you heard, my, heard about my show? <laughs> let, <laughs> let me recite it to you word for word. So, and, and then here's another important note, uh, folks. For the next six weeks, starting next Saturday, we have a temporary station change. Starting next Saturday for all of October and the first two weeks of November, Shane Plays Radio will air live on a sister station, 99.5 FM. It'll still be on Saturdays at 105, right here out of Little Rock. Uh, and then it'll air again pre-recorded here on 96.5 on Sunday at 105. So we're doing that to accommodate a football. I hope that's all going to be in your notes because yeah, I'm totally it is. lost. Yeah, okay. so basically. Yeah. Where were the notes again? The Shaneplays.com. Okay. So, and I'll, I'll make sure to keep, I'll knock on people's <laughs> windows at night yeah. and say, remember. But yeah, there was, uh, the station is really bending over backwards to help make sure you know, it's like, hey, we'll we'll make sure you go out, and then we're going to repeat it. But they they signed a contract with a previous uh, uh, manager or something like that oh, yeah, to sorry. accommodate uh, some football, and then some people that do Saturday shows kind of got caught in between. But this ninety six five, the answer has been really good about working with us on it. There's, it's fine. So you can have fun with football games. You can. I want to tell so. Zach how to have fun with uh, football games. I used to have to run well, actually uh, local baseball games back when I was in high school. Incredibly boring at a station in Gilmer, Texas. So what I would do, I thought we've got all these sound effects records. So I would get the sound effects, and they'd be okay. And you know, Snuffy Smith goes up to the plate. He strikes, and I would play laughter in the background when he struck. Oh yeah, yeah and then and, and I'd have cows mooing and all this, <laughs> and I'd never said anything about it though. And I know people are listening, thinking this is the rudest audience. <laughs> and where in the world are they playing? <laughs> but I never had anybody from management say anything because really? they weren't listening. But it made it a lot more interesting <laughs> for me. So Zach, our producer, there's a tip for you. Well, Zach, no extra is, charge. Zach is uh, is actually uh, <laughs> wants to get into sports broadcasting. Well, there's a, Lex, there's a tip yeah. for making boring games more interesting. Say hi to everybody, Zach. What's up? Hey, man. <laughs> and Zach, by I think it's coincidence, today is Batman Day. It's literally hashtag Batman Day. I don't know if DC Comics is doing that or what. Holy calendar event. Yeah, whole, yeah holy, uh, holy created event. Uh, or what is a contrived event, Batman. Uh, but, yeah, he's got a really cool Batman shirt on, so I don't know if that was a, a coincidence or not. And we'll be talking about Batman Day. I think he's just that cool. He is cool, man. Yeah. So um, he's very cool. So And, and he's, he's working hard and running all the controls on the, on the bridge of the Starship Enterprise there. So, Zach, now that we've done all that uh, and done, done the witty banter and the, the house cleaning notes, uh, are you ready for some news, buddy? All right, let's do some news. You hear, you hear those guys working hard, Kevin? Oh, Can you believe they work hard on a Saturday like that? But they're still that? having to use typewriters. That's sad. <laughs> well, because they're they're old school. They chomp cigars and they wear fedoras. So uh, anyway, I think there's a keyboard mixed in there too. Oh, okay. So well, I can only you know I can only afford so much. Oh, you're about to do the news. Yeah. I, I was waiting for the professionals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> was it let down? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be like that, Kevin. <laughs> And now here's the news. And now here's the news. So here's and, and so people don't get used to Kevin Clay's voice because <laughs> Kevin is an old hand at radio. He's a buddy. He's my gaming buddy, and he's a cool all around hoopy fruit. But um, the younger geeks won't get that. The older geeks will I get. I know where my fruit. towel is. Yeah, too. you know where your towel is from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. But Kevin, uh, Kevin, and also uh, Bill Brackeen are, are two friends that have radio experience that I would love to be both co-hosts and guest host this is in the news yeah oh i'm just no we're not there yet oh, okay. I, I just <laughs> takes him a while to get there doesn't it <laughs> this it's called anticipation play okay. <laughs> so so this is an asterisk okay. and then you follow the asterisk to the bottom of the page ah. and you say by the way Ke you may hear kevin clay again as a as a uh, guest host oh, when okay. life beckons me and i can't do the show well, that is news okay so here's the news <laughs> All right, the first news is a is a piece of Star Trek. And listen, Kevin, I apologize in advance for what is about to happen. Oh, go ahead. And you cannot sue me for any mental damage. But go ahead and do it. Do it, Zach. We have this is a tradition on the show anytime we talk Star Trek. Oh yeah. It's one of my favorites. What are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, really? I used to play this so on the you're, radio. So you're mentally damaged like I am. Oh, yeah. Then. Okay. Well, I usually have my guests on the starboard. Yeah. Bow, exactly. Star yeah, starboard. Up, Jim. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's dead, Jim. He's dead, Jim. Okay. So that, of course, I heard it back in the day on Doctor Demento, but that's a tradition. 
Yes. Anytime we talk Star Trek on this show, we have to play that. So you're, I usually have guests sign a waiver, but luckily you're mentally damaged oh, like yeah, me. Yeah. So, okay. I don't think that's Zach's favorite song. Zach, what do you think of that song? Do you love it? Do you hum it at night? No, not at night, but I love it. You do love it? Okay. Yeah. I love Boldly Fo- Going Forward because we can't find reverse. All right. The actual Star Trek piece of news. Which we've been waiting so <laughs> long for. <laughs> I think I saw one of your hairs turn gray over there, Clay. <laughs> so, um, okay. Anyway. Uh, there's this really cool, it's in the show notes at shameplays.com, but you can find it on YouTube. Just go to YouTube. Somebody did a, a virtual tour of the Star Trek Enterprise D in the Unreal game engine. And it looks really good. Really good. Uh, they start outside like you're on a shuttlecraft and then you land in the ship and walk around. Uh And they even Uh rendered the head that's off the bridge. So you can go into the head. You know what the head is. In yes, yes. But I just think, you know, all I can think of, that's that Sissy Picard ship. So. No, oh man, the Enterprise yeah. D was beautiful, man. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. love the Enterprise D. I, I, mean, I, I think love we the, should try to negotiate with him first. Well, that's why they had Riker. Don't. Yeah. yeah. You know what my favorite he bad. He was no Captain Kirk. You know what my favorite bad Star Trek is, don't you? Favorite bad Star Trek. No. You ready? Yeah. How come when Picard says fire at will, nobody blast Riker? But it do so. Waka waka. <laughs> waka waka. I'll be here all week. If Statler and Waldorf from the Muppets were around, I'd be getting savage right now. All right, and now we have. It is Batman Day. No 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 Batman. Okay, so um, it is Batman Day. I don't know why, but there's a hashtag Batman Day out there. And folks, uh, just so you know, show sponsor, uh, collector's edition. And the comic book store, Michael Tierney's uh, local comic book shops, one in North Little Rock and one in Little Rock on Treasure Hill Drive, the other one in North Little Rock on um, JFK Drive, to celebrate Batman Day. Uh, The first 40 customers in both stores will receive a free Batman comic book. It's the Batman End Game Special Edition, which includes a special eight-page sneak peek preview of the upcoming Batman and Robin Eternal series. And then also... Uh, this is their 33rd anniversary. Aha. Uh-huh. So there's there's a Buku, a veritable cornucopia of deals, 25% off back issue comics, 25% off uh, graphic novels. I think uh, he said that 50 cent comics are a quarter. There's a, there's a lot of good deals. So the point is, by goodness, get into the collector's edition on JFK or the comic book store on um, uh, Treasure Hill Drive in Little Rock. For, for a bounty of comic book goodness from Michael Tierney, yes. who, who I'm also quite quite pleased is a sponsor of the show. I'm, I'm looking up the deals right now. He, he texted me, and I've also got a printout here. Yeah, Batman Day we're, book we're giving away, we already mentioned. He said we got a 25% off back issues and graphic novel sales. 50 cent comics are only a quarter. And remember, the first 40 customers in both stores get a free Batman comic. I have, mil- I have more Batman Day news for you, Kevin. But wait, there's more. Yeah, okay. That's my official help for you. Yeah, wait, wait, there's more. Okay, Bill Finger, <laughs> who is a comic book creator, is no longer getting the finger from DC Comics. Well, that's nice. Yeah, so he is a co-creator of Batman, like the actual original Batman back in the day, ah. like in the 30s. And legally has never gotten credit. That's always gone to Bob Kane. But like everybody in the industry and all the geek fanboys know that Bill Finger was instrumental in creating Batman. So DC Comics is officially acknowledging him. And moving forward, uh, Gotham, which is a TV show loosely based on Batman uh, that just started airing again last Monday, second season. And like the Batman versus Superman movies and all that, he will receive acknowledgement. Now, that's a big deal. But does he receive any cash? I don't, I don't think he's with us anymore. He, oh, well, somebody needs to be getting well, some cash. I'm sure his family. Yeah, I don't, know nice. how that, I don't know how that works. Yeah. But the finally, like, something's being set right, right, as far as credit and acknowledgement. Cash, I don't know. I now, we made $10 billion <laughs> off your idea. We ain't going to pay you or your ass nothing. Yeah, or nothing. But hey, thanks, buddy. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> buddy. Well, evidently, Bill Finger was a heck of a nice guy. Now, Zach, th- are you okay in there? <laughs> I'm telling you, man, there's entire books have been written about this Bill Finger thing. It's a big deal. Oh, okay. You know how, like, inside sports, like, people like, like, you know, Shoeless Joe never got his due, right? Mm-hmm. And then now, you know, and people are weeping because he's being inducted. In the, it's like that. This is a big deal. Okay. Okay. This, this, is, with, this is a big deal. So, uh, yeah. Oh, and Michael Tierney just texted and said, Thank, sounded awesome. Michael, I am happy to promote. Uh, your Batman Day was and your that anniversary. My bottle of water? That was that was Michael Tierney. Oh, that was your bottle of water. There you go. Yeah, I was thinking uh, earlier. He asked me, said, "Do you want me to get you some water?" I said, "Yeah, sure, thanks." And he comes and he brings a bottle he's got. And I never saw. All right, 
Thank Where you. Is it? Michael, I'm and glad. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. Uh, listen, buddy, uh, thanks for being a friend and thanks for being a sponsor. So, and people, don't forget to ask Michael about the Wild And what's Stars. the name of his store again? It is uh, the Collector's collector's Edition on JFK in North Little Rock and oh, yeah. the comic book store on Treasure Hill Drive in Little Rock. Two Over convenient locations. Ball, two convenient yes. locations. I shopped with him since I was in seventh grade, Kevin. So, uh, he's wow, a cool three guy. three years now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, all right. Anyway, but yeah, ask Michael too about the Wild Stars, his comic book he's been publishing for several, I mean, like two or three decades. It's good stuff. Okay. So speaking of Batman Day and Gotham and all that, Gotham season two just premiered last Monday. Did you watch it, Zach? It was dark. I did not. Oh, it was dark. It was good, but it was dark. Uh, really dark. Um, and then this Tuesday, we got Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, is returning and, uh, Sky is evidently becoming Quake. You know, they're turning her into the Quake character from Marvel Comics. It's just a good time to be a geek for TV right now because Flash Season 2 is coming back October 6th, which is huge. And there's a Vixen a series of uh, animated shorts on the CW Seed, which is a website. You can go to shameplays.com in the show notes and find it. But they're like three or four minute animated shorts, and they're set in the Arrow and Flash TV universe. So they're set in the same TV universe, and in that continuity, they're just animated shorts. And then finally— I hear Zach's wearing his animated shorts today, too, that match his well, shirt. Well, you've been, you've been so, making him animate, and they're laughing and stuff. <laughs> I thought he was going to pass out. So that's we found out what makes Zach laugh. Ridicule the host. <laughs> Zach will laugh. No, we're laughing with you. Really. Okay. Not and then uh, Marvel's <laughs> Jessica Jones— uh, will be on Netflix. Marvel's doing a whole a bevy, if you will, of, of comic book related shows on Netflix. And the next one is going to be Jessica Jones on November 6th. And of course, we're looking forward to Daredevil coming back for second season. Not sure when that's going to be. We're about to go to the break. Before we do, I want to tell you something that's close to my heart. Uh, a friend of mine, Todd Mills, who is well known, uh, not only, you know, as for my friend, but he was in well known, the local band community. He passed away a couple of years ago. And last year, uh, we they had what's called Monsters of Todd, and a lot of local bands got together and raised money for his family. Well, this year they're doing Monsters of Todd too, and it's going to be uh, two nights. I think one night in Jacksonville or Cabot, at the Hangar, Jacksonville area, and then on October twenty fourth at the Rev Room, and it's Monsters of Todd too. And they are raising money, but this time a portion of the money is also going to the American Cancer Society. So I'll be talking more about that on my show in the weeks to come, but want to let people know you can go to Facebook and just search for Monsters of Todd numeral two, and there's a group and an event out there and things like that for that. So I will be talking more about that. Todd was a great guy, and I'm glad to help support uh, this effort to not only you know help his family, but also help the Cancer Society. So Zach, go and take us to a break. When we come back, we're going to have the five games or the five best games for families you might not have heard about with Kevin Clay. And we'll see if he if he can do it without ridiculing me. <laughs> All right, let's <laughs> go ahead and hit tough. a break, Zach. Thanks, buddy. Net. The classic online space strategy game has returned. <laughs> Bigger and better than ever before. Scout the universe and claim your empire. Construct, customize, and launch dozens of different starships. Battle thousands of opponents online in a team-based competition, leading to the ultimate battle of the galaxy. Grab your slot today in one of the most hotly anticipated indie games of 2015. Visit Megawars.net and get options only available during our pre-sale event running now. Megawars.net. Privately owned and licensed by the Arkansas State Police, Rock City Alarm Company has been in business since 1996, specializing in sales, installation, servicing, and monitoring of burglar alarms and fire alarms for the state of Arkansas. Rock City Alarm provides service for residential and commercial alarms and now provides cellular monitoring with remote arm and disarm. Just call John Hardiman at 501-541-8747. That's John Hardiman at 501-541-8747. In business for over 15 years, the Hillcrest Doghouse provides full grooming, bathing, boarding, and daycare services for just about all breeds with knowledgeable and friendly staff, including a licensed groomer with over 10 years experience. The Hillcrest Doghouse uses all natural shampoos, including a pesticide-free flea shampoo. All kennels are situated where we work, which means your companion is rarely left alone, providing the benefit of full interaction with our friendly staff. Additionally, we walk your dog at least three times a day to ensure a happy day. 
Grooming and boarding packages are also available at great prices. The Hillcrest Doghouse is located at 3924 West Markham Street in Little Rock. Call the Hillcrest Doghouse at 501-296-9800. That's 501-296-9800. We're also on Facebook. Find us and like us. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash Shane Plays. All right, and we're back. So uh, hope you enjoyed that. Listen, folks, please do if you get a chance support my sponsors. I'm very pleased to have them. They do good work. Many of them are personal friends who have done work for me, so I can definitely vouch for them. Um, Plus, they're local businesses. They are local businesses, by goodness, and, and it's good nice to support. Thing. Yeah. So, um, anyway, uh, back back into the show. We're we're on Shane Plays Radio, Geek Talk Radio, a journey into things you love. Uh, you can call at 501-823-0965, or you can tweet me at Shane Plays. Listen, I want to give. A, I'm going to take a point of personal um, privilege and and say hello to my my nieces. Or my niece and nephews that are listening right now. My well, wife it's your has show. Them. You can do yeah, that. Yeah, by goodness, that's right. <laughs> so I want to say hi to Michaela, little Mika, darling Mika, and uh, Nemo, and Jedi. That's a, his name is Jedediah, but we call him Jedi. There's and not then, a Bill or a Susie in the bunch. And then, huh? there's they got Nehemiah. cool names. They do have cool names. And there's Nehemiah, which, who we call Nemo, and my lovely, <laughs> my wife, the lovely Sheila, who who is who is probably uh, running around like the only player on a nine team baseball team right now trying to keep everything together and then my my son justice who who, who's almost two years old so love you guys thanks for listening so he gets happy when he hears that theme music for the show he'll Mm -hmm. dance around oh yeah how old is he not quite two almost two yeah so and i got a a piece of news here from gene turnbow uh who is the uh founder and general manager of krypton radio which you can hear shane plays on a week delayed and we're working on getting it live uh, Star Trek Continues, Episode 5 is now up. And people may remember we had Michelle Speck from Star Trek Continues on a few weeks ago. And we're having Michelle Speck and a couple of the other actors, uh, in fact, including the guy who plays Bones, I believe, and, and one other I'd have to look up, on October 6th. So they're going to be here on Shane Plays Radio on October 6th. But if you go to Star Trek com, Episode 5 is now up. And, and those are very good. Very good. I've seen them. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, Amazed the sets and Very the stars good. they get. Yeah, into. I didn't know the episode five was already out. I knew it was about to come out. Oh, so you didn't yeah, know that. No. I didn't. I, so uh, I'm, I'm going to have to watch it myself too. I knew it was. Well, we scheduled them from October sixth because I knew it was releasing yeah. soon. So I'm glad to hear. Oh, that. it's fantastic! But I won't tell you anything about it. I don't want to ruin the surprise. It, oh, so. have you already seen it? <laughs> oh, of course. For episode five. <laughs> oh yeah, months ago. Well, you know, no, it just yeah. <laughs> the answer. Well, you know the red haired like psychologist, right? Oh yeah, Ma- Elise McKenna. Well, that's Michelle Speck. She came on the show a few weeks ago, and she's coming back on. It's very nice. Oh, the psychologist wanted to come back and have another crack at you. That's yeah, not surprising. Yeah, yeah. That's waka waka. Waka waka. I just do that for Zach. Yeah. You know, I hope you've learned if you're going to be on radio or do anything in the public, you got to have thick skin. Oh, yeah. But you've been in politics. You yeah, know that. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, the radio's nothing like politics, Clay, <laughs> I can tell you. Politics, you see it coming. No, I'm just joking. All right, I've already, I've eaten up so much of our time already with the news segment. Yes, we're down let's, to the top two let's, games. I'm yeah, let's get right into the five best games, and then I'm really hoping there's a little time to talk audio books. But lay it I on, us, Kevin. Well, let, let me and let me start by this. Let me ramble on aimlessly for no. Um, yeah, I just want to talk ramble. about what the thing about board games for people because I, there, we may have some new people listening in or tuning in. It's my buddies. And what's the deal with board games and why are they so big now? But I think that with all the electronic stuff, everybody glued to their phones and glued to their computers. I, I think that board games, people are seeing this is a way we can actually reconnect with real people. Strangely enough. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, you're saying even strangers, you know, if you go to any of the game stores around here or, or whatever, you know, you can just sit down with people and just immediately your, your buddies and you're, you know, swapping stuff back and forth and right. having fun. And so that's the beauty of board games. And it really brings families together instead of let's all stare at a screen tonight for six or seven hours right and i'm sure there's some value to that especially right. if it's a really good football game but uh this is the way you know you can right that's no, why i'm, I'm talking with about you. family games there, here you know board games are, are are making a huge comeback and i there's one game that i give credit for the renaissance and i see it's on your list i didn't see your list till right before the show Aha. And there's one game that I will say that is the game, yes, I think, yes. that kicked off the renaissance of board games. Is again. it the number one? It is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Starting with Settlers of Catan. Settlers of Catan. And you know what's interesting? I was talking with Guido Tuber. His, his father, Klaus Tuber, is the one who invented Settlers of Catan. 
And I wonder if he had like a like a mad scientist laboratory with beakers yeah. and smoke, and he was inventing. No, actually, they had nothing. This nothing. was after World War II. This game goes way back. Oh, does it? I and didn't so that. the you know, in Germany, and so I was talking with Klaus, and he said, "Well, what happened after World War II?" People, because uh, my main comment, I said, I noticed these games coming out of Germany. Yeah, they're European. Not, they're, they're not very militaristic. You know, I mean, we've got risk and access right. and allies. And, you right. know. and he said, yeah, after World War II, the Germans were kind of tired of yeah. all that. Well, it's and, very competitive, but not Right, warfare. but he said what they want right. to do, so they just wanted to get together in their, their coffee houses and, play, and just, you know, get together with other people. And so board games were just a great way to do that. And, yes, yeah, Settlers of Catan. Number one on the list, and I know the regular gamesters are going, what do you mean? No one's heard right. of that. But to regular folks who, if you talk about games, you won't it. find at Walmart. When I Because most it, people go to the game section at Walmart, and if it's not there, they don't know it exists. Well, exactly. I mean, people have to understand there's still a huge amount of the populace that has no clue about these games. They're right. extremely cool. They still think of board games as Monopoly or Sorry or Trouble, and there's nothing wrong with those games. Right. They're fun. But there's this whole other right. world of, of games. Now, uh, Settlers of Catan is the game. Yeah, Kevin's like, let me talk. No, I didn't want to talk. This is a conversation. I don't want to not even, yeah. So, well, I was just going to say. <laughs> cool. I'm messing with you. You know that. I was just going to say <laughs> that uh, Settlers of Catan is the game that I use to introduce people to the world of right. board games because everybody loves it. Well, the thing about Settlers of Catan and why that's number one on my list, too, one thing, it's not terribly complicated, although, you know, people compared to. You know, trouble yeah. <laughs> or, or sorry right. you know, it's going to seem apples to apples it'll seem rough but settlers of Catan, basically in that game you know you everybody you've got your little your little city or your town and you're trying to grow it and you're producing resources and the thing about it is every turn everybody does something so it's right. not like most games where you take a turn and then 20 minutes later it's your turn again and you just kind of wander off right and you know check out the dips and chips which is every, a major pet peeve of mine when people leave the, i'm like where are you going yeah the game is on yeah but, see, but anyway. settlers you, you roll the dice and so you might produce some wheat or some wood or some ore or whatever and other people can also end up producing and the other thing about this game that's so great and why it's used in a lot of schools are using settlers of Catan because what it teaches is that if you are a butthead, you will not win. Right. You have to be able to play well, you, nicely with others because you, you have to trade. You have to trade. And if you're a right. jerk, no one's going to want to trade with right. you. Right. Unless they lose. just absolutely got to have what you got. But, you know, they will. you will be the last choice yeah, to trade with. Yeah, because there's three other people or right. two other people at the table if you're playing with four. Uh, it can be played with up to six with yeah. the expansion. And there's uh, a uh, there are expansions. And there's also, I haven't gotten to play it yet, but I really want to. There's a Star Trek version I would really like to play. Have you played it? No, no, I've seen it. But, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah. I've got Senator's. If I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna get a Star Trek game. You know, we've we've played. Right. Was it Fleet? Star yeah, Star Trek? Fleet. Fleet. Yeah, I, I won that, that, and then you trounced me at War of the Rings. That's right. That's why I wouldn't play Star Trek game with you anymore because <laughs> you beat me. That's the way I work. And you even try to take the phasers <laughs> off my ships. Yeah, yeah. You're like, that's what, right. what side? Do you I know you can't use that. It's a, it's a Thursday, Shane. You can't use phasers. <laughs> yeah, it's Thursday, so you can't have phasers. <laughs> that phaser doesn't work. It's the Fizzbin option. Fizzbin. for my real Star Trek geeks out there. Did, did he get? Did Zach get that? I don't know. Okay. He's, anyway, he's, okay. So Settlers of Catan, you got to get that Mayfair Games. Great, great game. That's the one that started it, and uh, you don't have to be able to read to play it. I uh, have never ever introduced that game to somebody. Now, every not ninety percent of people love it, right. but nobody's ever said I hated that. Yeah. Right. Well, it's funny, and I know, and people that I know that aren't big gamers will tell me. Uh, I've had them say, you know, we we'll get together and play this game all weekend. <laughs> you know? Well, those whole families that I would not think of. That would know about a game like this, that are rabid about it. Yeah. So, so I'm saying, so if you like that, yeah, that's a good. And you start there, and then you you learn some some concepts that then translate to other games. Number two on my list. Number two. Number two. That's, um, this actually is one you can find at Walmart, but a lot of people still don't know about it. Pit. I have not heard of this game. Okay. I'm going to look it up right this now. This is an old game. This is from back in the the 20s and 30s. Are it's, you sure this isn't Pitfall for Atari? Yeah. No. This is just okay. Pit. The funny pit th game. What Pit is? This is a great one because it takes like. Two, oh, I see it. It takes okay. two minutes to teach it. Basically, it's a card if, game. if you've got four, yeah, if you've got four players, then you'll pick out four resources. You know, you it could be wheat, oats, barley, corn. You know, whatever. So you'll uh, you get out, and I don't know, say it's ten cards of each of those. So you shuffle those cards together, and you divide them up amongst everybody at the table. Now the fun starts. What you want to do is corner the market on one of those. You want to end up with all the same thing in your hand, all wheat, all corn, all barley, whatever. So you trade with other people. The, the funny thing is 
You can't tell them what you're trading. All you can do is if you've got two barley you want to get rid of, you pull it out and you go two, two, two. You're yelling two. Somebody else pulls out two cards, two, two, and you're swapping. So you it. don't know what you're swapping. Right. You might be swapping for the same thing. And so now everybody's got these cards flying back and forth because you want to be the first to complete your set. And what adds that little extra punch to it, though, just saying, oh, well, it's all just totally luck then. The thing is, like, wheat is worth more than corn. So everybody might be going for wheat, which means nobody's trading it. So oh. if you got to pick up on that real fast, go, okay, well, I'll go for barley. It's worth half as much, but at least I can get it because when I complete, whoever completes rings the bell. Ding! There's and a bell? Yeah, there's a bell. Oh, oh with I'm the, sold. With the deluxe version. Which, I, I, which yeah, I, I have, see it. If, if there's <laughs> a, yeah, that's one thing I got to yeah. tell people. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to reveal the location of Kevin Clay's. <laughs> Residents, because he'll probably get I'm burgled. into the deluxe version. He'll get people will crash his house and take it. But he's got all these amazingly cool ver Like your version of War of the Ring is like ridiculous. Like all the the it's, pieces and three Ds. Pimped. Yeah, it's yeah. You pimped your ride on that. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. and you, you're into the painting and all that. So oh, yeah, and yeah, extra pieces and all, yeah, yeah, and so, all that stuff. Okay, Pit. Yeah, so Pit number you can, two. You is can pit. find that at, at Walmart or anywhere. And uh, okay, next. King of Tokyo. I love it? King of Tokyo. This is a great one, too, for it's kids. Like, well, can I say what I think Go it ahead. is? Yeah. I think it's like Yahtzee with rampaging monsters. Yeah, that's okay. it. That's, anyway. a, that's an excellent yeah. description. Yeah. That would be the log line in the yeah. old Hollywood days. Yeah, yeah. The, the old, the, it's Yahtzee the elevator Yahtzee with rampaging monsters. And that is it, because you've got, I it's think, fun. maybe it's seven dice. I don't know. But, yeah, you're, you everybody gets a monster. And the great thing, the board is easy, because the board, I tell people now, it's very complicated. There is... One space. Yeah, you can <laughs> either be in that space or out of that space. Yeah, that's it. You're basically, you play a rampaging giant monster trying to be the king of Tokyo. Yeah, you're uh, Mechazilla or Yeah, the I like king to play Kong Cyber or, Bunny. Oh, Cyber Bunny, I yeah. like to be Cyber Bunny. But yeah, there's a Godzilla, <laughs> there's a giant, whatever. And now they have a king of New York version, yeah, which I man. saw. Yeah, yeah so, that's, that's too complicated for me. But anyway. It's great. King of Tokyo, yeah, because the, the funny thing about it is there are two ways to win. Now, one way is to kill all the other monsters at the table, which has to do with how you roll your dice and all. Right. Uh, the other way is to gain fame points, which you can do by just rolling numbers and not attacking anyone. My son was talking to someone at college, some girl, and they were talking about this game. He said, I don't even know why they have that fame path to winning because nobody ever wins that way. She goes, well, our family always it wins that way. Yeah. Obviously, this family takes a different approach yeah. to gaming than we well, do. Well, I was going to say that. <laughs> Wait, for somebody going to die <laughs> Somebody's at our table. going down gonna... <laughs> like a clown. You'll drop them like a bag of dirt, Clay. That's right. But uh, uh, no, it's uh, in my opinion, having played the game a few times, I think it's easier to win the fame way. But it's more fun to go after your fellow monsters. Yeah. Now, the way because fame, you have to roll certain, like, three threes but or three twos. But you also get fame whatever. points for but, being in the but city, But here's the right? deal. See, if you're playing with our group, you're going to have a hard time winning that way. You see, it's easy, it depends on the group because our group is so busy attacking everybody right. that uh, you've got to keep rolling <laughs> hearts to try to keep – got to, well, do I keep the three points I got or do I try to heal myself right. before I die? Better heal myself. So, so another, it turns into you got to fight to survive. So at our King table. of Tokyo is a psychological study of each family. Group. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and our family's pretty twisted, but we knew that. Yeah, so knew that going that was, in. Uh, Ex excellent choice. I love King of Tokyo. Okay, next one uh, people might not have heard of. This is a. It's not a very expensive game. Easy. Ink and Gold. Have not heard of this. Basically, a lot of these games are kind of rehashes of very simple concepts. There was a game back in the fifties called Skunk. You can play this with dice. I heard that stunk. I'm yeah. sorry. I, I am sorry. I'm sorry. Waka, waka. Zach is like, dude, yeah. he's in there shaking his head. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Skunk, basically, you roll two dice, and you add up the score. You know, like if you yeah. roll five, and then you roll it again, you roll six, and now you got 11. You roll it again, and now maybe you got 15. Problem is, though, if you roll a one, once you roll a one on either of the dice, you lose all your points. Ouch. And if you roll two ones, you lose all the points from the beginning of the game. And Ink and Gold is basically kind of based on that principle, except it's with cards. You're going through this temple. You're laying down a card, mm -hmm. and it might be some jewels on it. And so everybody at the beginning of each turn says whether they're going to stay on the adventure or go back to camp. And so if you stay on the adventure, you take whatever comes. So if, you know, five jewels comes down, then everybody there, if there's four players, then everybody splits four, you know, gets four, and one stays on the card. And it goes nice. on. And so meanwhile, so as you go through this temple, jewels are being left behind. How do you get those jewels? You, when it comes time to turn your card over, you go back 
And so the more jewels there are, the more temptation for people. So now you thought you were going to maybe get 10 jewels. Well, somebody else went back too. Right. Now you're only getting five. But now are you risking rolling a one by going back? Well, well, here's the deal. No, going back is the easy way out, except what, you, what you're risking is any future gains. Because now that you're gone, now the people, there's less people splitting the jewels. And okay. so they're getting a better payoff. But there are nasty cards that come out. There's mummies. There's fire. There's <sighs> snakes. Mummies, the, mummies shamble out. The first mummy shows up, you're okay. The second mummy shows up, you lose not only you know that turn, but all the jewels you've collected so far are gone. Well, you know, if there's any so. British listeners listening, they're just seeing like a mom. Why? What's the big deal with mom showing up? Oh, no, they've been about mummies. mummies. They're all about the mummies. They've been the ones who explored the mummy tombs. Mummy. Oh, come but on. The, you, you haven't watched enough mummy movies. Uh, you haven't watched that. enough Doctor Who. Where oh. He goes, are you my mummy? <laughs> Have you seen that episode of Doctor Who? When yeah, he says, are you my I, mummy? I guess I okay. That one. All right. Anyway. <laughs> mom. So anyway, rampaging moms. Yes, moving, moving right along. It's mm -hmm. been ink and gold. Ink and like gold. It's a simple, simple game, but fun because, like I say, the, you, once you, the more you play, the more you see the the psychology, and you're trying to figure out. Okay, I want to go back. I want to take all the jewels. Right. But oh no, but they're probably going to go back. But do I let them go back and take all that? And and then okay, I'll stay. I've right. got so many jewels I've gathered so far, but there's already been a mummy and a snake and a really fire. Fun. And if there's another one of those, I lose everything. And and so you know, it's just how much are you willing to risk? Do you and have, how lucky are you? Do you have the deluxe edition with? a real little mummy figure yeah. that you put on the table? No, no, there's no deluxe edition of this. This is just a... It's if a, I know Kevin Clay, you took like an action figure and wrapped it in toilet paper. Yeah. Said, here's the mummy. <laughs> no, because these have to be cards. That's the only reason there's uh, not a deluxe edition, because they okay. have to be cards. You can't right. see what's going on. I do have a game with mummies, and yes, they are painted, but they that's, painted. A, whole, that's okay. a whole other thing. It didn't make my list. It's not that fun, but the pieces are cool. Uh, and la number five, so what we have? We got Settlers of Catan, Pit, King of Tokyo, Ink and Gold. Gold. And what's number five? This is this is one of my absolute favorites. It's, if as far as I know favorites, what it is, I love as, this game. As far as favorites, you it told should be, me about this game, and I went and bought it. Yeah, it's it should great. be higher on the list, but yeah. I just it just ended up at number five uh, for no particular reason. No particular uh, reason. Bang, bang. Also by the same guys who made Settlers of Catan. Guido, my good buddy Guido, Guido, whose dad. Did I mention his dad invented <laughs> Settlers of Catan in a laboratory with beakers and smoke? That's right. Yeah. In, in Germany, it was a secret lab. A secret uh, lab. Anyway, we have ways of making you play. They are. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bang! From Mayfair Games. Uh, uh, this is a spaghetti western card game. It's a lot of fun. If you love Clint Eastwood movies, you know, the fistful of dollars yeah. and all that. It's got all those cliches in there. It's great. Bang! It basically, the premise is there's a sheriff, there's outlaws, there's deputies, there's a renegade. There's a renegade. You don't know who the renegade you don't know who is. The, well, a key component of the game is... You can't tell people who you are, except for the sheriff. Everybody, everybody knows, everyone who, knows the who the sheriff, sheriff is, is but right. nobody the dep nobody knows who the deputy is who's supposed to protect the sheriff. Right. Nobody knows who the renegades are. Nobody knows who the, there's outlaws too. Right. right? And yeah. the outlaws. Yeah. And you can only tell by how they play. Right. You can try and to so, figure it out. So once somebody starts shooting the sheriff, you can pretty well figure they're an outlaw. Right. Now the the thing is with the renegade though. His object is to basically Be get everybody killed. Standing. He wants to see everybody weaken themselves so much so he's the last one. So he may play initially at first like he's helping Being the, the sheriff. sheriff. Yeah, you might think he's the deputy at That's first. Right. And then right. he turns bad. Yeah. No, it's great. End. Great so. game. Uh, and another thing I like about this game, Kevin, is that uh, – it, it totally adapts itself to, like, four or five people up to, like, nine or ten. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it actually gets better the more people jump in. Yeah. So and it's, it's, yeah, it is yeah. another game, too, that you're not waiting your turn. Right. Because the whole turns consist of, hey, I'm going to shoot you across right. the table. Or yeah. I'm going to take a shot at the guy great. next to me. Or, or I'm challenging you to a duel. Or, oh, yeah. these Indians attack. Everybody, you know, play a, a bullet. Or, you know, oh, I lost some health. Drink a beer. Of course, in true Old West fashion. Right. You drink, you drink a beer, a beer and that your... heals Yeah, anything. it's definitely. So. It's, it's just dripping in the tropes of the Old West. So. <laughs> oh, that was good. Do you like that? Dripping, dripping in the tropes, in the of, tropes the of the Old West. Every now and then. My tropes are dripping. Every now, every now and then, Kevin. Every now and then, even a broken clock's right twice a day. So uh, I will. In fact, I think we're going over to some friends. Well, we're going over some friends' house definitely tonight. I think we're playing Bang. Uh, so you should. We have a communal game like where we all buy games and throw them into the community, and then we, you know they're they're over to our friends. Now I thought my friend's game closet was amazing until I saw yours, but it's still <laughs> a pretty good game closet. And I bought the bang that's a big bullet. Yeah, you gotta have that. And it has like all bang the expansions the in it. Right. Yeah. So okay, so let's run them down again, and then we're gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna ha I'm gonna tell people where they can maybe find some of these games, and then we'll hit a break. But run these down for us again, Kevin. Okay, number one, and I had my honorable mentions, but we'll see yeah, that for another day. Yeah. Uh, Settle of Catan that's just that's the basic that's the must-have 
right. get that thing. And if it seems complicated to you, there are all kinds of videos online showing you how to play this game. Uh, Pit is the next one. Card Pit. game, you can pick that up at Walmart. Uh, King of Tokyo. Now, these others, all the other games, you're going to have to go to a real game store. And let me tell you, do you want to know why? What? I asked somebody at one of the game companies about their games, why they weren't at Walmart. And they said the problem is that Walmart tends to want you to make things so inexpensively. Yeah. It, you know, it to, cheapens you the lower quality the of quality. Stuff. Yep. And, and most of these German games, you know, the, the, the card stock is thick. You know, it's linen cards. Pit, great game, but it's cheap. You, you're going you're gonna to wear those cards out, but, you know, it's cheap. Go buy another set. Right. But uh, everything else, uh, the, the quality of the components and all is great. And so you won't find it at discount right. stores. Uh, but uh, King of Tokyo is uh, number three on the list. That's the one with the, the monsters and, like, Yahtzee. You put Yahtzee with monsters. Uh, Ink and Gold. The treasure hunt game. And that's one, you know, kids love it. Adult, yeah, everybody it likes fun. it. And then Easy. Bang. Bang. Yeah, Number that's probably. Five. Settlers of Catan and Bang are probably yeah, the I'd most complicated. Those, those are probably the most complicated on the list. But, but they're uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, yeah. and once again, you know, because you know, it's things that are obvious to us right. geeky types. A lot of people don't realize you can just go on YouTube and how to play. Yeah, I do that whatever. all the time. And yeah. In fact, you make videos like that. They, they review games, maybe not say yeah, how I to play Yeah, I think I've only reviewed one. Maybe the other was to... how to paint uh, War of the Ring miniatures for dummies. There you which go. I believe is number three on the hot videos charts on BoardGameGeek.com <laughs> in the War of the Ring second <laughs> on edition. Power, so, 90, yeah. power 96.5 <laughs> with right. the 10,000 watt. You were doing that boss radio voice. That's right. Power, the 6,000 watt 10, blowtorch. How much, uh, how, much, how much blowtorch do we I actually don't know how much blowtorch. Oh, okay. we have right. Zach or does I'm anybody sure hear us Marston. hello yeah. is this thing Steve on Steve or Russ if you're listening how much blowtorch <laughs> do we have here all right let me tell you where you can find some of these games at our show sponsor Game Goblins some goblins are your friends Game Goblins is Central Arkansas's premier retailer of Magic the Gathering Warhammer 40k board games card games RPGs miniatures and hobby accessories call Game Goblins at 501 224 game or visit them online at gamegoblins.com that's 501 224 game or gamegoblins.com Conveniently located, 1121 South Bowman, right on the corner. Right on the corner, Kevin. Right on the corner. Well, I've been there. Of Bowman and Canis in West Little Rock and staffed by friendly employees. Game Goblins has expanded their store size. And there's plenty of room for exciting inventory and tables for play space. For all of your gaming needs, I heartily recommend Game Goblins. Make sure to check out their customer loyalty program that rewards you based on your actual purchases. Game Goblins earns your business and keeps it. First-time customers, mention Shane Plays and receive $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. That's Game Goblins, a 501-224-GAME, or visit them visit them online at GameGoblins.com. Tell them Shane plays sends you. Uh, Zach, take us to a break. When we come back, we're going to try to talk just a few minutes about the behind-the-scenes of audiobooks. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Comic book lovers, Michael Tierney's local comic book stores meet all of your comic book needs with friendly service. Visit the comic book store on Treasure Hill Road in Little Rock or Collector's Edition on JFK Boulevard in North Little Rock. And don't forget to click on over to the wildstars.com website. I personally have been a customer of Michael's since the mid 80s and I trust him for my reserve list still today. Michael knows comics. In addition to being in business for 34 years, he has written multiple columns for comic magazines is an overstreet price guide advisor and publishes his own comic book series the wild stars trust me these stores are run by a comic book lover for comic book lovers remember for all of your comic book needs with friendly service and to get your copies of the wild stars make sure to visit the comic book store on treasure hill road in little rock or collector's edition on jfk boulevard in north little rock and visit thewildstars.com to learn more. Call Chapman Service today for all your air conditioning and electrical concerns. 0% financing till January 2020 for a limited time. Voted best of the best for five years in a row. It's hard to stop a train. Chapman Service, all you want in an air conditioning and an electrical company, nothing you don't. Did you know that your business can provide its employees with the same benefits packages as even the largest Fortune 500 companies? Often at no direct cost to you, the business owner, and while saving money at the same time. If you've always thought that you would like to offer those big company benefits to your employees but thought that there was no way, let our team at the Makeham Teague Agency come by and show you how it can be possible and how simple it is to put into place. We offer major medical and group and individual plans, on or off exchange, dental and vision, life products, cancer, accident, and more. These benefits create that ever so priceless commodity known as loyalty. And yes, we are ACA certified. We even offer these same benefits on the individual basis if you're just a one-person entrepreneur or making things happen on your own. Give us a call today at 501 501- 
838-6827 to schedule your no-obligation on-site consultation. The Maycomb Teague Agency is serving all of Arkansas and surrounding states. 501-838-6827. Give us 1% of your trust and we'll earn the other 99. JLM Tree Servicing can take care of your tree servicing needs. Contact them at 501-351-7714, online at jlmservicing.com, and on Facebook. Do you have limbs touching the roof or killing your grass with too much shade? Leaves collecting in the pool or gutters? Need to remove that unsightly dead tree? JLM Servicing is insured, provides free estimates, serves all of Central Arkansas, and doesn't collect payment until job well done. JLM Tree <coughs> Servicing, 501 501- 351-7714. Find them online at jlmservicing.com or on Facebook. Hey, welcome back to Shame Plays, a geeky live talk radio show that is a journey into the things that we love. I'm joined by uh, my buddy and all-around cool dude, Kevin Clay. <laughs> We've been talking uh, board games, uh, or five top five family games you may not be aware of before the break. Uh, he actually had a, an honorable mention for another five we didn't get a chance to get to. I'm going to post those on the uh, when I when I post the blog and the show and all that. I'll put those in there. So make sure to check back on the show in a couple of days and, and you will see those. Um, and then we're going to Kevin has offered graciously to to be a recurring guest and we'll do stuff like top five games or, or this or that or whatever. So Kevin's a lot of fun to have around and I'm glad you're here. Now, you, I, I did get some feedback from a listener, Otto, uh, who's a buddy and a listener, Kevin, and he said he would have included Munchkin. Yeah, I'm not a Munchkin You're not fan. A munch- and I know it's people. an incredibly popular game. There's yeah. like 400 expansions for it. You know yeah. what ticks me off about it? This is petty. This is yeah. petty with the fact that it's you've, you're supposed to keep track of the points, and they give you nothing to keep, keep track, track of. Track you're of supposed to come up with your own stuff. Way. I'm like, hey, I just spent 20 bucks or yeah. whatever on this. You could have put some beans give in there. Give me a pad or That's tokens. right, some pieces yeah. of plastic. Or, and right. it's petty. I know. But but I know people who just absolutely love Even Munchkin. Up. All right. So. Well, time, as I like to say, one of my favorite quotes from Star Trek Generations, Kevin, time is a predator that stalks us all our lives. So we've got about five minutes to talk, if that. Yeah, we have roughly five minutes to talk about audiobooks. And I did, there were people who were like, oh, cool. And so since they want to know about that. I huh? promoted it. Uh, now, people may not know. And if you go to shameplays.com. <laughs> Or if you go to, or if you go to Audible and search for Kevin now Clay, got three minutes. Yeah, you go to shameplays.com uh, and look at the show notes. You go to, or if you go to Audible and search for Kevin Clay, you can see some of the books that Kevin has done. But Kevin, you narrate audiobooks. Yes, if you can, I do. If you can stop chortling at me long <laughs> enough to come back into the show. Well, in our final two minutes, I'd like to say, uh, <laughs> no, basically, and and I stumbled into it. A friend of mine, you know, told me about them. And audiobooks are kind of cool. Uh, and Very cool. Anybody can go to acx.com. Audible runs this site. It's basically a match.com for narrators and authors. acx.com. acx.com. And, and anybody you can go. And, and the thing is, you set up a profile, but they've got all the information there on technical specifications, and there are a lot of them. There's about you know, several pages. But uh, – but there's also links to you know things to help you with your narration and learn. And what it boils down to, somebody asked me the other day, said, well, do you think I would have a shot at something like that? And my question for him was, do you enjoy telling stories? Because initially, you're probably not going to make much money of it. But if you just love spinning a yarn, if you love telling those stories and you think you can you sit and record you know, a 10-hour book. Well, that's the thing. You have to <laughs> bring Steve Marston on. Uh, we got Steve Marston, who's the operations manager. I've heard of him. Yeah, popping on. But listen, Kevin. <laughs> Uh, now, uh, that sounded, listen, Kevin, no, I was going to ask you a question. You have to do all your own editing, right? Right. Now you can hire people, but basically you're not going to make enough money at the first to do it. But, but there's all kinds of links to tell you how to do that in videos and you can call me. I'll tell you. So. All right, Steve, what's up, buddy? Hey, hey how much blowtorch do we have? How much blowtorch do we have? Blowtorch? Well, it's, it's all theater of the mind. I mean, it doesn't sound like a lot, but I think we're somewhere around 10,000, something like that. Well, that's not but, bad for uh, Central Arkansas. No, it's not bad. It covers the metro. I mean, that's what we want it to do. But, and, and it's but also online. When, it's online. See, exactly. Yeah. It's multiple platforms. But but just when just when I thought chain planes couldn't get any geek here, you went out and got the <laughs> Maharishi, the king of the geeks. <laughs> the guru of geeks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Kevin right. Clay. You know what? You know what? Kev- you don't have some kind of trumpet fanfare or something. The king is Well, I, he tried to add that to the soundboard, and I told Zach to delete it. I, I don't doubt it. Listen, don't let me tell you what happens when you have Kevin on your own show, Stephen. 
He mocks you and chortles at you is what he does. Oh, I know. Well, he, he chortles listen, at you. My career in Central Arkansas really is because of Kevin Clay because <laughs> I started out on his morning show, and he allowed me to come in, and basically the show was let's make fun of Kevin because Kevin's a geek. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. I fit right in, yeah. and, yeah. and he was he was, he was was kind enough to let me just <laughs> – Make fun of him, and, and now he's now he's on the station with you, and it's just you guys are great. It, well, was, it was a great show. Thanks, Thank buddy. You, he's going. Kevin is going to be a recurring uh, problem. But yeah, recurring problem. Well, guess right. how do you solve a problem like <laughs> Kevin? And then he's also going to be a, a guest host if I'm out of pocket along with Bill Brackeen. So uh, I've got to, I've got to mention audiobooks for like another thirty seconds. But hang on the line, Stephen, yeah. if you want to. Okay. Uh, if you want to turn. Okay, so you edit your own audiobooks, right? And then you get matched up directly with the author. And right, then, you audition. And here's okay. the thing about audiobooks is, is I tell people, you know, the thing is when you win an audition, it's because that person thought you were the best person who auditioned for it. And eventually you get to the point where you're, you're decent enough that people are willing to pay they'll, for they'll that actually, kind of ability. Wow. And you can make decent money. I'm telling you, royalties are a wonderful thing. Yeah, right, and exactly. So, a really mailbox like money. Ladies yes. and gentlemen, Mark <laughs> Raymer is in the studio. Make sure to listen to the Mark Raymer show after Shane plays for the best in political talk. Yeah, look at that. I love that. You like that ad lib, Mark? All right. Anyway, doing a lot of lifting the veil today. Uh, I like to lift the veil. I've had people tell me not to, but I think it makes more interesting oh, personally. What do you think, Stephen? Is it okay to lift the veil occasionally on radio? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, all right. So, People, ACX.com, right? Right. And right. and you can actually be matched up with authors and audition and record audiobooks that go on Audible. Here's some of the books that, that Kevin has done. He's well, done. Let me just throw this out yeah. real quick. Uh, and right, if, you, if you have a question for me, if you can remember my name, Kevin Clay at KevinClay.com. Or the uh, Kevin Clay on Twitter. Uh, yeah, I never checked Twitter. You never though. checked Twitter. No. What were you going to say, yeah. Stephen? I was going to say, uh, this, and this, as much as I love to give Kevin a hard time, I got to tell you, his audio narrations are fantastic. Yeah, he, he gets into it. All the care, every character has a different voice and a different everything he does. They really, yeah, do. I, I believe it. Kevin is a is a creative, fun guy. I've always enjoyed Kevin. I don't like to say that very often. <laughs> yeah, but I, I will yeah, he it, heard me that. saying earlier that I liked him. Okay, I like, Zach's it, about to me. pee in his pants in there because we're we're <laughs> yeah, we're about to kill. All right, I got to wrap <laughs> See, up the, the old show. radio with me. Right. Yeah, y'all have a great. All right, thanks, Stephen. All right, I got to wrap up the show. Listen, thanks, Kevin, for being on. People, go to acx.com if you're interested in recording audiobooks. And go to shameplays.com and look at the show notes for some of the books that Kevin's done. Or go to audible.com. Listen, next week I'm going to have Dave of Tabletopping join us. He's a Twitch and YouTube personality. He does tabletop role-playing games and video games. Don't forget about the temporary station change. Next week we'll be on... Uh, 99.5 at this time on Saturday, 1 o'clock, and then repeated on 96.5 on Sundays at 1 o'clock. And don't forget, we are carried on Krypton Radio, kryptonradio.com, Krypton Radio, a sci-fi for your Wi-Fi. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, everybody. Hope you all have a great week, and thanks for listening to Shane Plays Radio. 